welcome Rock AM. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? And uh, yeah. thank you for joining the broadcast. It is such now, an honor. Of course, of course, man. I mean, number one, such a pleasure to be on here it was such a legendary mix and engineer. Ken Lewis, you know, we met, you know, AES, uh, this past AES. And like, I just bonded with this dude so much because college dropout was kind of for me that was one of my breakout kind of like projects that listening to it it was a good life experience at the time i was a kid but you know i, I my mom didn't allow me to like get involved with hip-hop because of the politics and she heard college dropout on like a, a road trip and she was like this is an amazing album and i, I was like it is <laughs> i'm like this is hip-hop so that kind of transitioned into just me loving just, you know, that style of music and, and Kanye and the production and everything that was done around that time and learning about Ken, um, Ken's role in that, that was just like, I was like, man, I have to be like your lifelong friend now. <laughs> that album literally changed my life, man. So, you know, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, yeah, it's pretty, obvious. <laughs> it's pretty obvious. But um, yeah, man, I'm Rock AM. I am a audio engineer, artist, producer, you know, creative. I just love doing cool ass shit. Um, professionally, I'm I'm really you know doing a really good kind of like creative run in the immersive space. Um, from mixing anywhere from like your catalog stuff from Universal, from like Frank Sinatra, James Brown, Mary J. Blige, you know, all of those legendary Motown artists all the way to your new artists like Rihanna, Ice Spice, um, and, and many, many more, her, you name it. Um, and yeah, you know, I kind of fell into this space by mistake. <laughs> Wasn't intentional, like most things are. Um, you know, I got a call about, you know, Atmos in like 2020 and it was during the pandemic. And, you know, this, you know, this person called me up and he's like, you know any engineers that know anything about Atmos? And I'm like, uh, no, but, let me go check this stuff out. My engineer hat came on and I did a rabbit hole down in the Atmos. And I'm like, yo, this seems like a revolution of music. So I was intrigued just by the concept and I just dove into it and I never got out the holes. <laughs> Here I am. That's like a quick story, just the gist of it. But yeah. Pandemic about it. And then because I was talking about it with him so much on camera, it was basically a thing of like, I need to go do some Atlas mixes so I know what I'm talking about on these live streams and everything. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it, might, yeah. it might help. It might yeah. help. So started doing that, and then that eventually, you know, like we were saying, just doing more and more of it led to I need to build a room. So yeah. nice. And how did you discover Atmos Techno Dad? Uh, uh, started off with the Gravity Diamond Lux Blu-ray Edition. I paid eighty dollars for that fucking Blu-ray. Right. <laughs> so is this this is all consumer. Love it, love it. Yeah. 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 And that was the best expression of Atmos because they're in space. So they're like spinning around. And then like the mission control is is here on the right surround, then top right, then top left, then on my side again. And then. So was that like really the first time you heard home theater like the movies? Yeah. Yeah. And and. Anything, and so I, I went through, like, in my first, like, in, in 2017, all, I did all these Blu-ray uh, reviews on their Atmos and just to find. So I would, like, rent or buy, like, whatever I could. Right. Right. And, like, garbage-ass movies, like uh, Jupiter Ascending, garbage movie. Fantastic <laughs> Atmos, <Yeah>. right? <laughs> you know? Um, and it's one of those things where it's just, like, um, I wanted that, that immersive experience. And I noticed, like, space movies... Yes. You know, some some movies like Sicario, eh, great film, all dialogue. Really? Right? Like, why is it in Atmos? Like, I'm not really, you know, it did, didn't make sense. It didn't make sense. And, like, um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's so, yeah, so kind of, so, that's, how I, that's how I found it. And then, yeah. So, Jonathan, you came to work with me in 2021? Yeah. And one of the reasons you wanted to work with me, because I was very interested in Atmos, <laughs> and so were you. Definitely. So I'll give Jonathan a little setup. Jonathan's been with me about three years. He is the Atmos mastering engineer here. So anything that I mix in Atmos, I deliver mastered in Atmos by Jonathan uh, say, before say. my client hears it, which is a super luxury. And, you know, a lot of people, uh, you know, uh, probably a lot of people watching ask yourselves, like, well, how can I get opportunities? How can I make my way in the music business? And what Jonathan Garcia did was he saw a niche 
for Atmos Mastering that he was like, hey, Ken doesn't know how to do that. I could really become a pro and then I could do Ken's work and everybody else's work. And Jonathan immersed himself, no pun nice. intended, nah, nice. into Atmos and really learned all of this shit from the ground up and became an expert. And now you just got your first gold record for mastering uh, Rema. Yeah. And congratulations. Thank whoop, whoop. Thank you. Um, Thank you. So, yeah, you know, I'm a big preacher of you got to make your own way in this world. And that's exactly what he's done. He found a niche and he dove into it and filled it. Tell us more. Man, it's been wonderful three years. <laughs> um, you know, I got into Dolby Atmos because, like, uh, in at the end of college, you know, 2021 is kind of like when uh, it got announced. And I, I was like, I'm like, wow, this is going to be the biggest thing to hit, like, everyone. And I, like, went to all, like, my old, like, my old people, like, my mentors at the time and, like, all these people I looked up to that were, like, in the field and they just told me I'm pretty stupid. <laughs> like, they're like, yo, this isn't going to work out, man. Like, you're really going to waste, like, a lot of your money and time. Like, and I'm just like... Crazy like you... a fox with a gold record now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, you know... I'm glad I didn't listen to them because, like, uh, it, I'm just like, you guys are crazy. This is, like, from mono to stereo, you know? Like, it's happening right now, especially, it's a like, big jump. with, like, yeah. streaming. Especially, oh, yeah. like, from just for Music 12 channels over, like, It's the, the first streaming format in history. For multi-channel. It's the yeah, first yeah. time listeners can actually experience streaming uh, the way we can hear it in our control rooms, which yeah. is great. Ex- yeah, especially, like, the integration with uh, how spatial audio is, like, even pushing that border. Right. Um, and just like building upon that, uh, it's just gonna keep going. And you know, the Apple Vision Pros. Rock, you're you have a super unique kind of insider, high level perspective of what Atmos is and where it's going. Do you have yeah, any insights yeah. into where the format is headed? Is it yeah, gonna yeah. be more adopted? You tell us. What are your thoughts? I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot of rumors out there, as we all know. Um, I think just if you you know, anyone in, in the audio space, specifically people who've been there for the transitional period of like mono going into stereo, they kind of see now that Atmos is something that's sticking, right? And we see it through marketing, we see it through the money that's being put in. Um, and the first few years were pretty, you know, it was risky, right? It was initially a corporate push. And the corporate push was so that it can get to the creative space, right? So you kind of have to throw things in people's faces by force to get people to kind of like say, okay, let me be, let me accept this. So that corporate push kind of gave labels a, a shot at it, which labels have the biggest catalogs in the world. And then, you know, that kind of stemmed out to, okay, let's make some incentive plans. Let's get the artists involved. So for me, when I saw that there was a gray area between consumers and users and artists really understanding what Atmos was, I thought to myself, okay, there's like an educational like curve here, but let's not, let's not make it educational. Let's make it creative, right? So I started to look at a lot of the creative aspects of Atmos because I'm thinking of just the future, you know what I mean? And if you really think about it, a new format and a new way to listen equals a new way to create. And that that gives artists a new way to kind of like give their music a new sound and to give it a new experience. And I think that's what was really intriguing for me. Um, Atmos has opened the most doors for me ever in life. And I've been in music professionally for a little bit of time now, um, in and out of the label system. I mean, as a kid, I interned over at Republic Records, you know what I'm saying, young. And, um, you know, it, it, it opened doors because, you know, right now, music and technology is like in parallel. So like, and we've never been in parallel. Like it's always been a war <laughs> with music and, t- you know, um, now that we have AI, which AI we've always had, let's get this right. Chat GBT just made a commercial, but everything is kind of aligning into this new futuristic like paradigm. And we have all of these new products that are coming out. Like the, the Apple Vision Pro is just like a test. Like people don't even know that's like a beta version. They only test and, to see what's what's going to happen and how the market responds to it but when all of these products come out we're going to be able to apply them as pro audio people and as consumers and have a new way to enjoy and consume music and i think that's what's important i think we've been in stereo for how long ken what 50 years i think is <laughs> i mean i've been alive so <laughs> a long time 
You know what I'm saying? So right now it's just like we need that transition. We need that new paradigm. We need a new way to 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 open up the door. And and most importantly, we need new people. You know what I'm saying? This this brought brought more people in, and we have different perspectives. One thing about me is like when I'm in the studio, I really love having like different people from either musical or non-musical backgrounds to give perspective because that's like that raw kind of like, you know, all right, this is the consumer brain. This is that type of brain. You know, we can't do it all alone. And collectively with Atmos, it's just like, we're, we're in a world where there's no rules. And we're what's cool about it too is like, we're kind of day-to-day -day figuring things out, just like the Atmos mastering thing. Like that wasn't a thing. And you notice that, right? So now it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm actually, cause I do my own mastering, but I'm like, I wonder, you know, it, it would be probably cool to have like somebody designated for this and it could probably bring a lot more out in mixes, you know, this guy, but like, look at how new this is. And now you're, it's going to get out there that you're mastering and you're going to be busy as hell. <laughs> Yeah, that's the goal. Yeah. I think um, <laughs> kind of like to what you were saying, you know, since this is also new for the consumer, you know, and the creator, like this would probably be the time to actually try to get some sort of standardization <laughs> as yeah. far as at least <laughs> the translation. Right. We were talking uh, okay. about it yesterday. Right. right. Yes. If we were to take the calibration method here in the studio. Not the yeah. not the diagrams because the Dolby diagrams contradict each other, yeah. right? 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 On Monday it's this way. On Monday afternoon it's go that way, right? You know, so it's very confusing. So if we were to use the same calibration method in the studio and then in the home theater space, and that way, you know, we can have like what what um, Dr. Floyd Tool calls the circle of confusion. We we would like tighten that up a little bit. Yeah. So. Home, home theaters would translate much closer to stereo, right. which or to to to, to 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 your yeah. Right. We're not we're not we're not talking about headphones, right? That's that's right. another headache altogether. That's another conversation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, we're noticing with um, my my colleague's app, um, you know, in, in the uh, home theater space, they they have a curve in the AVR that will mm -hmm. you know tune your system. So they call it the Harmon target curve. And it was mm -hmm. Dr. Floyd Tool. He went, and this is a long time ago in Harmon. Um, he had the JBL M2 speaker. He measured that speaker in a bunch of different rooms. So this curve is the average of those frequency responses in those rooms. Well, unless you have a JBL M2 speaker, it doesn't yeah, mean there's, anything. There's another curve in this and, and uh, so, and land so, that yeah, exactly. everybody ignores as well. Exactly. So hey, hold that thought. Hold that thought. So... So with uh, my colleague's app, we are now able to create a custom target curve specifically for that room, taking into consideration the distance between the front stage and the main listening position. In your guys' case, that's a mixed position. Yeah. And, and the capability of the speakers, right? Right. Taking all those things into account, it creates a custom target curve. So imagine now if now the same thing in the studio space, Dolby has a curve. Right. right, that's absolute doo doo, isn't it? it? Is. Yes. Right. Nobody and... does. Well, I say that. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I'm saying that. I'm saying. Thank you. Well, my opinions are my own. Okay. No, anybody at Dolby watching, no, it's it's not bad. Wait, hold on. <laughs> just, just really quick. Just no, I'm not even trying to correct you. My perspective on the curves. I think it, the curves are designed to beat. I mean, we're supposed to beat the curve. I mean, that's that's the point. I think. Um, I think anything that's produced in any of those programs, we're technically supposed to beat, and that's just and that's our that's our thing as engineers. We're we're always striving for that. So that's a good way to view it. Yeah. So so if we were to um, now get a custom target curve for this room, and I got a custom car target curve in my home theater, now at the main listening positions of both separate spaces, we're actually going to hear a similar experience. We're going to have a similar experience. So if we can get that kind of thing happening and, and tighten up, because there's so many like variables. The, right? the other thing that uh, is a huge advantage for the end listener right now is the audio movers uh, spatial audio stream. Hey, okay. right. so that's what we're doing right now. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Do, and, do they know? Do they so, know? This so you, this is this is spatial. So you as a mixer can broadcast a stream to your phone, pick it up in headphones, and listen binaurally, or you can can you broadcast your ADM to uh, your speakers via. Yeah, yeah, like no, you can, yeah, you can play this right back. Like, 
Audi the new Audio Movers app is really tight. Um, and for those of the watchers that are still on the YouTube regular, um, yeah. shout out to all the people that are in this, their studios hearing us in their studios. Yeah. yeah. That's really awesome. Have you done that before, yeah. guys? Girl? No, never. Never. Think, never. I think Making history. Yeah, this is the funny. Audio Movers thing, right? It's, that's crucial. You know, when I... Audio movies was always cool to me. I mean, they always had the best tech when it came to those, you know, uh, streaming sessions. But when they did it in 714, that instantly was just like, oh, shit. Now now we're getting closer to everyone, right? right. right. Now, now, now now we can be master classes. Now we can, you know, there's tons of opportunity in that. So, again, these things are going to start piling up as far as opportunity. And people just, you know, whoever's interested, get on board. It's the best time right now. Just like technology in general, AI, all of that stuff. Best time right now. The next two years, if you're not in now, I'll... (laughs) (laughs) So people are living or listening in their 714 rooms right now to this microphone that's in surround, right? Correct. So, so if you were to like swing something around, uh-huh. oh, man, we, so, so, hey, let's, 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 let me move over here and keep talking. What's going on? Let's go do, do like a round <laughs> robin. Hi, hi, hi. Hi. What's it's up? What's up? What's up? Yeah. It's time whoop, for Ken whoop, to do his ASMR stream. It's ASMR yeah. stream. <laughs> now I'm above you. It has and height, now like I'm two, below two you. Also, like it'll do height as well. Yeah. Yeah, it should be. I don't know how it does it, but. I don't know if uh, the Marcus video played earlier. Was that the video that was explaining this, Mike? No, no, no there was no audio coming out of that video. Apparently, the video. Yeah. Asset. Oh, the yeah. Nolan had a video that um, we don't know where the audio went, but he did a whole binaural thing. We'll probably post it on the YouTube channel. He says even the room verb is round. <laughs> <laughs> he said somebody else said that tickles. Ha ha ha! A- ASMR stream. So, yeah. Rock, how do you? How did you get around? Ambisonics. Knowing the. Uh, the streaming translation before audio movers was well what well, with dsps with like apple music and stuff like that or like yeah just uh well i guess who cares before now we have audio movers what what is your process for referencing your mixes when you're finished yeah. up um okay <laughs> so that, that was the wild wild west at one point uh as you may know <laughs> so early on you know i got activated with this really early and before, just like we were trying to figure things out, we were really figuring things out, right? And you had, you know, Dolby Atmos has its encoding, which is what we use in the studio. That's the renderer that we use, right? And we mix it down. So like when we're mixing, I've learned to mix in the room first. I, I've had the opportunity to, the luxury of being able to mix in one of the best rooms in the world, you know? So that was to my advantage, but, the next thing was, you know, you can mix it in the room and get it sounding the way you think it should sound. But then when you get into headphones or, or you listen to it binaurally, that can be a complete disaster. And that all could stem from your binaural settings. That could stem from placement. A lot of things change binaurally, it, even tonality wise. Like there's so much that goes into it. Um, so we, you know, where I was at, I was doing it at Republic Studios. Republic had just opened this new studio and they took over Red Bull Studios in Manhattan right in the Soho area. And um, they had this beautiful PMC room. I mean, this is the first room I actually listened to Atmos in. It's complete love. I'm so fortunate for that. And that's the room I learned to mix in. And we would have to mix in the room, then mix in headphones, balance out the headphone uh, mix and the uh, mix in the room to make sure they both translate properly and learn how to do that. Like, I used to love putting things in the sides and like in the wides, but like, you Put too much in the sides and the wires, you blast it in, in, in the headphones. Um, even with the LFE, you know, using the LFE, you may think like, oh, this sounds great in a the room. Then you get into headphones, it's a big explosion in your head. So, <laughs> so learning to balance all of those things out. And then, um, you know, then you got to think about DSP. So DSP is like your Apple Music, your title and Amazon. Specifically with Apple Music, Apple Music has... Dolby Atmos, but they have what they call spatial audio, which is their own encoding, which is cool because it's good for their 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 products, right? Like AirPod Pros, where they have the head tracking stuff, um, and now with Apple Vision Pro, blah blah blah. So now you got to go into listening to what it would sound like in their DSP and entitled. And I, I'll never forget, man. I was talking to Christine from Dolby, and I was telling her about the the adventure of mixing one record and how many steps you have to go through for quality control. 
And she told me one thing and she was just like, don't mix for anything. Don't mix for Apple, don't mix for Tidal, don't mix for Dolby. Just mix the record and get it sounding the way you want. Don't chase anything. Once I learned that concept of not chasing anything, then I started to really kind of pivot and really start to kind of like develop my own way of kind of like knowing what was what. And that and at that point, I was barely checking much. I would check my headphones, I would check it in a room, and I'll be good. I wouldn't have to check the DSPs because I knew what the trans what the translation would be. And then as time progressed, their algorithms changed. So, you know, you had all, Apple was they raised their volumes because we were complaining about the volume um thing. And it just got better and better. And it's going to continue continuously get better as long as we continue to keep mixing, you know what I'm saying, and pumping out more records. It's all, you know, trial and error. So, yeah. I, I think we could probably do an entire show on just calibrating and setting up your room. <laughs> but one of the most <laughs> crucially important things is time aligning your speakers and really just spending a ton of time in your space listening to it. What we did was we picked each stereo pair and we put the same piece of music out, the stereo pairs, and we made sure that each stereo pair was balanced to my ears perfectly. If you move it a half a millisecond, you can hear the image shift. Mm -hmm. So we were in the room and uh, and playing the same stereo in pairs out of each pair of speakers and then making sure that that translated at the same volume and you know and impact to the headphones so you'll do yourself a great favor in translation between speakers and headphones if you just spend a lot of time early on setting up your room correctly and calibrating yeah, and listening yeah. between the two and the qc pro will help you with that the, the room, well the, actually the actually kit, the, this yeah. this kit what you just talked about is a section on this disc speaker pairs there right and this is this is very important what exactly what you were saying nice. and we took it one step further not only is it um each pair but we also do the adjacent speakers so front left You'll do it with front, oh, with center, and then ah. front height left, and then surround yeah, left, that's tough. Oh, or or yeah, if you that's tough. right, yeah, yeah. right, and then and then you got to like balance all those and get the time alignment right for all of those. Then you move to surround left, which is going to be mid height left, uh, front wide left, surround back left, and that. And once you get all of that, then that was actually one of our viewers told me to do this, and I spent like five days going through all these combinations. <laughs> And this is the section that people love the most. Right? Yeah, that, that sounds like a, yeah, that would help a lot. Yeah, yeah, no. But setting up your room, crucially important. And do, I mean, do we were using like laser pointers and, yeah. you know, yeah. laser measuring tools to make sure that the distance between this speaker and that speaker to mix uh, position little was. Labs, uh, yeah, Little Labs uh, uh, IBP, is that what it yeah. is? Little Labs, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Little Labs makes a plugin that does very Thanks. minute timing and phase correction and you can put that on your stereo pairs and listen in your room and put the little labs in and you can adjust by you know tenths of milliseconds and phase oh, right, right. and figure out what the best timing is and then enter that into dadman or whatever your baked in software is am i explaining mm -hmm. that correctly yes <laughs> I, do, I do understand something you, you got it you got some stuff yeah <laughs> so, that's sick hey listen uh, i'm uh, setting up my room in maybe about two months I might call you to come by. So that, like that world tuning, and I'm not in that world at all. I, I don't, I don't, I don't understand it, and I really don't try to <laughs> because. Ben Garcia and Nolan Monogold, uh specialty yeah. around here. So, nice. um, and Nolan down in the control room, uh, he's shout actually. Out what uh, up, yeah, Nolan? Shout outs to Nolan. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Nolan uh, is has really dove in headfirst and embraced Atmos recording. And he's set up his entire, he has a, his own studio with a big live room and a church. It's freaking awesome. And, uh, and he's set up um, an Atmos microphone array to capture uh, mm -hmm. bands and instrumentation. He was telling me about that, yeah. Oh, it's so freaking cool. So, like, all yeah. of us are just really kind of picking our passion of a direction here and going with it and carving mm -hmm. our own ways. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So shout outs to Nolan. Whoop, whoop. Yeah. yeah. I'm actually oh, working on a project too like that where I'm, you know, I'm recording at a church. This church has like a 360, 19,000 pipe organ array. Oh, it's crazy. And then, you know, Shep's, shout out to Shep's microphones. They uh they ended up giving us some microphones. And I'm like, how the hell do I supposed to do this? And I got some good information from Dolby. 
my theory on it was like, hey, if I'm doing this for Atmos, I want to kind of like set the microphones up the way I think the speakers are going to be set up, like for a 916. And I was actually right. And, you know, Dolby has a lot of good documentation on just like the best practices for recording, you know what I'm saying, for Atmos. Um, so, I mean, Atmos has just opened the door on so many different opportunities, you know, and there, there's also some, some other things that's happening with that in the tech space that's really like big. But just being able to just think that way now, and I think that like that's what's important. We got to keep pushing that needle forward, you know, like what creatively are we going to continue to do to make this like, you know, impactful. So, yeah. We uh, me and Jonathan got to hear, um, we both went to a Mike Miller Atmos uh, thing at Sweetwater for two days, and it was shout-outs to, Mike. Shout shout to, out, shout out to Mike Miller. He's a brilliant mixer. Um, and, uh, but, what's that? Oh. I forget why I was telling about Mike. Um, what was that? Uh, recording? No. Oh, yeah. Uh, Mike Miller and the Hazel Rigs do Atmos recording, and it is breathtaking. Uh, we couldn't even believe the playback on it. And it was just like unmixed raw playback from Tri the yeah. recording capture. And we were in the control room just, it's magic. So Yeah, yeah. when you record, when you record for Atmos, it's a whole different level. <laughs> it's like, I've heard some recordings. My guy, Justin Gray. I don't know if you guys know Justin. Gray. Oh, yeah. Justin Gray. Yo, that dude is a wizard, man. Shout out to Justin Gray. He's doing some spectacular things in the creative space of Atmos. He showed me some stuff during them, and it was just, like, mind-blowing. Like, I was just in awe, you know? You know so. Yeah. he's. Uh, we met him at the AES two years ago, or I did. Uh, brilliant, immersive mixer, mastering mm -hmm. engineer. He, yeah. he did the Snoop Dogg record. Mm -hmm. Dog, yeah, doggy. Bro, his story, well, his story and his story, his story is like the story that, that I always tell him, like, man, you need to tell this story on as much as you can. Because people don't understand when you're doing catalog how like the 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 you know just how deep how much detail and how you have to be so freaking just like careful what you're doing. I mean, like and you know, for me, it's crazy because I wasn't alive for a lot of this stuff. Like, I wasn't even, you know what I'm saying? So, like, I'm like, yo, how, like, who am I to fucking mix this shit? You know what I'm saying? But like, <laughs> what's crazy yeah, is yeah. it opens the door to, you get to see what they were doing at those times. You do your due diligence. It forces you to educate yourself on how records were done. And I think that just musically just, it makes you more powerful. You know what I mean? And to Justin, like, you know, we didn't, he didn't have like a hi-hat or I think it was a snare or something like that. And he went and like literally found a similar snare, EQ'd it, compressed it, and triggered point triggered it to be part of that record. Like it, it was just nuts. And the snare was completely from somewhere else. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So the post-production, yeah, it, it's, it's just wild. It's wild. At most catalog, people don't realize how insane it is. I'm mixing a, a, a catalog album right now. It, there are no mixed stems. Yeah, these guys oh have been here. Uh, and, and it was done by a super famous mixer who's one of the best in the world. And I've got to match his stereo mixes from scratch. Yeah. Uh, yeah. With no automation or recall data or anything, just by ear. Nothing. And then make it as identical from start to finish. And this is a super dynamic album. So every section I need to check and dissect and make sure just on the stereo then the stereo is locked in stem it out move to atmos the process the records you've done incredible i the yeah you know, have you ever played when you get the multi-tracks you ever play them like in pro tools dude <laughs> it is the best music education i mean those players and the oh the recording it's yeah. incredible too bro yeah. yeah it it's like it's one of my favorite things about being both a mixer and a producer is because as yes. a mixer i get songs from all over the world from great producers and i get to dissect their productions and i get to see what's happening mm -hmm. and then i get to incorporate those ideas into my own toolkits and that's yeah. how everybody really learns. But that's, that's how I've that's leveled the, up my production. I, I was in the kitchen talking to your wife, and you came, you came in, and you're like, "Whoa, I just learned some <laughs> shit." Uh, you know, like that. that that's it, awesome. It's always a learning process. Thing. We're always gonna keep learning, man. I think like this, this game, like the in, audio engineer production, like that game, you get better like the older you get because you were the more information you retain, it's like you just become unstoppable. That's why like 
got guys like George Massenberg and like all of these OGs, like they 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 don't stop because they just get smarter. And I think their ears even get better because it's like training. You literally train your ears for life. You really I'm talking six years of training. You know, no one can tell these guys anything. <laughs> you know what yeah, I'm saying? Man, yeah, that, that's really the hard thing. Like I can hear the way you breathe, boy. <laughs> <laughs> like, like they can they can hear you, they can hear your digestion system. Bloodstream sounds too loud. <laughs> well, that, you know, that's the hard thing starting out is like you don't know what you don't know starting out. And and you're second guessing every move that you make. And guys like me and Rock and Mark are just you know, we pull up the faders and the song tells us what to do because yes. we've done so many other songs and so much other work. And it's like muscle memory and athletic training for your brain and your ears and your instincts. And you just over time get more comfortable and better at it. And if you've seen me sprint mix, that's just instinct. That's all. Instinct. It's so true, man. When I when I first really got into the professional space, like audio wise, I was like very um you know, I had like the imposter syndrome slash like it felt like I wasn't good enough because I didn't learn the way everyone else did. Like I didn't have the I wasn't fortunate enough to go to like a school like a Berkeley or I didn't have none of that technical background. I literally just watched was in the studios or I would watch YouTube videos and literally learn how to mix from that. Like Young Guru taught me how to mix on SSL, like literally. And I met him for the first time and I told him that I'm like, oh, bro. You literally taught me how I how to mix. Like literally, you taught me how to use a compressor. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But like, yeah. like, you know, I don't speak that same language where it's like, oh, 20 hertz. And like for me, it's literally all feel. Like I literally just dial in and when the music speaks to me, and that's how I retain the music as well. And I thought everyone thought that like everyone else was like very technical, but then I started hanging out with guys like Michael Brower and Ken. I know you're the same where it's like they're like nah man this is all feel like we turn the knobs and we feel it and then and then we get technical and that's just production from a production creative background it's like yo dog we're not we're not trying to dive deep into that right now like we want to get the vibe we want to get velocity we want to we want to feel it like when you add that aspect that's when the music is beautiful and then atmos i mean come on man atmos is all about harmonics it's all about feel it's all about this this right here like that that third eye you know what i'm saying like that's what we need to capture and continuously keep growing on yeah i can yeah, I, I, I'm, I, I'm like I, drinking espresso so i'm chatty right now chatty, hey, dude. <laughs> yeah, that's great. i i you know what i would love to see is a little bit more risk taking in the atmos mixes because you know you know what i say rock bring on the circus right I want it to be as... <laughs> that's going to start, like Rock said, with the artist. Yeah, It's got to yeah. be the artist discovers the format, envisions what they can do and create with it and how they can touch their listeners mm -hmm. and how they can elicit emotions through this space. And there's going to be artists that create solely for Atmos. Yeah. And, yeah. you know... That's one of the exciting things about... Especially with Logic. I feel like Logic is... is I think, in my opinion, the easiest one to just open up and go with. Probably. But that's you know, correct. And it's, I think it's amazing that for artists, Was it like 200 bucks? Yeah, yeah 200, 200 bucks. Right? And it's like, I mean, it's literally two switches, I think, that you, you know, you throw the, the plug-in on the master fader and switch. Oh, no, you don't even it. have to throw it. You just go to mix, and you click Dolby Atmos, and then you do yeah, the drop-down for Atmos. So that's and, like... And that, you can mix and, and mix on your AirPods on Bluetooth. Yeah. So you now artists have it... Oh. Right yeah. in their, you know, in their toolkit, right. in the software that most of them are in. So they're in Logic. Right. It's right. the easiest one to get going with it. So how long before enough people are just like, oh, what's this button? Oh, let me move that over. Oh, what would happen if I composed a different harmony to go over here? And now they start getting inspired by the space rather mm -hmm. than us trying to stuff stereo into this format and blow it out. Right. That's what I'm excited for. Is I, I think, there. you know, from that uh, Mix Immersive event, you know, <clears throat> I noticed a lot of the mixers, the pro mixers, are trying to, you know, create like a soundscape. Where for for me, it's like I want to make sure every speaking, if every every speaker is spoken for, right? And I got this um, the the K five uh, remix stems because that's I don't I'm not pro like you guys. I I, I got to you know I got to get I got to see my this uh, is a cool stem dealer, right. you know, <laughs> a stem dealer. Um, I got a vocal. <laughs> Over here, I got some stems for you, bro. You know, um, uh, so the vocal came stereo dry. Uh, with uh, another one was uh, delay, 
uh, of the vocal, and another one was a reverb. So I did the stereo dry in the front left and right. I did the um, the delay in the surround left and right, and the reverb in the surround back. So the vocal goes through the room, right. and you really get that on a speaker system. You really get that that sensation. And like my viewers love that one too, because I like packed a lot in the LFD. Nice. So you know, but yeah, you know, By the it, way, so it all depends, you know. Yeah. By the way, for anybody tuning in, uh, this binaural roundtable, we're using a, a Sennheiser Ambio microphone, which has four capsules on it, so it's pointing in all different directions, and it's capturing uh, 360 of the room. Yeah. And hopefully, Besides. if you have headphones on, you can localize each so, one as we talk. So my colleague told us to spin it around 180 because, uh, right, right. because of the, the view. It's uh, like, Chana's on the left, but we hear him uh, on the right, yeah, yeah. So, so we did that, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is a front to this mic too, apparently. Right. How many times have we seen the picture of, uh, of an artist singing into the back of a microphone? And, yeah. 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 It doesn't sound good. I have one I question, have one though. Question. I, I've been, I've like, been like, saying this for some time when we was doing the tech stuff. But this whole thing with this like digital plaque is just blowing my mind right now. Like, Dude, this is so great. Like who 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 created that? Because... Um, uh, shout outs to my wife Lori Lewis. Uh, she real. So I, if you don't know my resume, people, I have 114 gold records so far. I'm probably gonna get another 10 or so this year. And the plaques get really, really expensive. And I'm tired of oh, yeah. paying through the nose for plaques. And I needed to get like 60 or 70 of them. So my wife is designing these amazing digital versions for my, uh, and we just project them onto TVs in the back. And Can I buy one? I just ordered, I just ordered, by the way, I got plaques for like the, the stuff that I did, immersive mixing. Like I got plaques I got from Jewel Box. Shout out to Jewel Box. Shout out to Jewel Box. Uh, you you got over that's 100 man. billion streams, bro? You kidding I mean, me? Yeah, yeah. That's cat. I mean, that's I mean, yeah. yeah. That's not even. That's not it's, even it's, all. It's, 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 that's just A lot of people were like, "Who the hell is this guy with 100 billion streams?" Right? But you got to understand the business and the education. Catalog is 80 percent of the industry. 80 percent. So we're talking like anything. Catalog is technically anything 18 months or older. But like all of those records from James Brown, Frank Sinatra, like they're still getting big sync placements, sync opportunities. Like they're making the money and they're the core of the music industry. In fact, like that money goes, I mean, I'm not going to, not even going to say that. Anyway, <laughs> you know, so again, being able to crack open those files and as a producer, it's just like you're salivating over like what you see and you just, you just get to explore like different generations of like music. And man, it all accumulates. Like I look at the streams day to day and like people are still streaming like, you know, Frank Sinatra's, you know, uh, Wicked. Uh, I mean, um, uh, I put the word, I got the world on a string, all the greatest hits or James Brown, like say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud. Like they're streaming this stuff crazy, <laughs> crazy. So when it's a hundred billion streams, yeah, it's pretty fucking accurate. You could look horrible. <laughs> That's just what it is. Hey, no, I'm, I'm just saying, fuck it, fuck yeah, amazing, fuck yeah, yeah, man. We need to fit. We need to create an alliance, right? We need to get all of the the big dogs, like get everybody in a room, and we need to start this petition where we can make some money off of those streams. <laughs> you know, you I just want a penny. I'm, I will I show up yeah, right. for anything. <laughs> that, that, that penny. Dude. I just want a penny. <laughs> yeah, can you imagine? That would be nice. Imagine, man, that's crazy. But yes. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, the, the process of mixing catalog is so yeah. Yeah. insane. I, That's I, really I saw impressive. what you were doing yesterday and immediately, and just like I told you, Rock, the other day, you guys really need to get paid more. Like, for mm -hmm. real. Like, this, uh, is, yeah, this, do, but... this is a lot of work. And then for the short right. amount of time, because you got to get it in, and I'm not going to say when, but like, right. you know, it's it's crazy the amount of work you're doing. Yeah. Uh, the the <laughs> paychecks don't match the work right now, for, for me anyway. Um but at least in catalog work, because sure. it is so time intensive and so ear yes. intensive. And, but that's I, like forever. <laughs> and I believe I'm setting myself up for the future. Like the work that I do now is going to ensure that I get catalog work for the rest of my career as long as I want it, um, yeah, hopefully. Yeah. And, and, and it's going to train me on best practices on how to do catalog yes, work, yes. which is uh, yeah, it yeah. really helps to have been an engineer for over 30 years. Right. Because, okay. like, I just mixed the Donna Summer stuff, and I mixed all the Donna Summer singles, and, and there were no mixed stems, and the multi-track was not arranged. 
It was a 20 minute, each song was like 20 minutes performance, and the producer would chop sections of the performance out and mix to two, uh, to two track. So I had to go yeah. through a 20 minute <laughs> multi track and find the pieces that matched the original master, uh, and then mix those to the original master, and then assemble them into a Pro Tools session correct for drift, if anybody knows oh, you know, oh, what yeah. analog yeah. tape drift <clears throat> is. You've, because your oh Atmos God. master has to be perfectly aligned, aligned to your yeah. stereo master. Let's not even get into that. <laughs> oh, I know. It's like... Right. like James Brown. Just, but, but, James yeah. Rock, but Rock is right. Like <laughs> the, the 3% of the music industry is new music. 3%. And what did you say? 80% is catalog? So, yep, yep. Um, yeah, I'm going to go where the money is. Okay. Yeah, man. man. So, you know, I, I'm just, for me, I'm just going where, like, when you discover mastering and Atmos was a thing, I'm following history and not just following what the niches could be, but like vinyl. I got into vinyl cutting. I cut two vinyl records recently. Uh, Skoy Q and Akon. Yeah, I, I, got, I got a studio that I do it in, in in New York and Brooklyn. He has the Norman Lathe. I learned the entire thing. And, you know, that's an art. I mean, I I give it up to just the guys that's been doing it and that are teaching me. But, like, the vinyl is at an all-time high. And no one even, I think 60 or 70% of people that buy vinyl don't even open it. <laughs> Did you just look? Like, Dude, it's it's crazy. Me. You know what I'm saying? Vinyl and no uh, player. Mm-hmm. Well, like, um, yeah, what yeah. is it? Uh, Best Buy got rid of all their Blu-rays and DVDs, but they're selling vinyl. So Mm -hmm. there you go. Yeah, I was just saying, you you just you get so involved in just like statistics and just the business and what's going on. It it just it helps you elevate and kind of know the next door to open. You know what I'm saying? Right now, it's like all about like AI and technology and tech. Like, what are we doing in those spaces? It's a little scary, but it's like I kind of look at it like, what are we doing to increase like human connection with AI? Like, how can we increase creativity? How can we use it as a tool? Like money is a tool. So AI is the same concept. It's like getting to that end game closer, you know? Yeah, I agree. We've been using AI creatively here. And, uh, Dude, chat GPT, yeah, we used it like three, four times to do the stream. No, I've, I've created music with AI. <laughs> really? And, Which one? Synth, have you seen uh, Synth G- GTP? What were we using? GPT? What are you using? Yeah. Sound, sound, no, no, no. Sona? Sona. Yeah, we've done some work in Sona that's been kind of interesting. And oh, you know, yeah. all the rights. It's a brave new world. Yeah. It's a lot of cool shit out there. there. There's this company I'm working with called Tuni, Tuni AI, and they have like this, uh, this thing where you throw in like a record. It could be a one-way file, and it literally recreates that record for you and changes the, the genre. It changes everything, like, and it makes it totally a different song. And it's fucking cool. It's Tony AI. Check it out. It's it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. That's but, on the to-do list. All yeah, man. Because you know we're we're in a space of like remixes too. Like remixes is about like a big thing, a bit bigger than what it's ever been. So everybody's exploring this play, this space and the AI place because of the demand. You know what I'm saying? If that can get pumped out, like you know. Speaking oh, of remixes. I feel like uh, Techno Dad um, might be perfect for the remix space because you don't really worry about the stereo and the remix. Right. I think you could probably have a lot more freedom of expression. Yeah. Well, um, you know that panel you were on, Brock. Um, God, we'll, oh, go, well, Eric, Eric Schilling, is that his name? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. uh, yeah, he he said that um, with Atmos, the you know if it's the Atmos mix of the song, it's got to stay true to the you know stereo and true to the artist he's like but if it's a remix you know then then it's all, <laughs> all bets are off. you know all bets are off techno dad is a go maybe i could you know <laughs> you know do like a techno dad atmos remix for all the edm artists because yeah, I, I mean find your niche oh well actually yesterday that song that uh we did you had me do the sprint mix mm-hmm. oh man i put i put the the keyboards up top mm-hmm. i did the back background vocals in the surround back it actually it actually was pretty nice man you heard it yeah yeah, yeah you were here yeah, that, was, that was actually kind of cool the sprint mix. yeah yeah i did pretty good i did yeah. pretty good I'm mama would have been proud yeah. <laughs> that's cool man that's fun stuff i know like i know artists that that are into Atmos that have done things like mainstream artists too. They're like, yo, put my vocals anywhere but in the front. 
You know what I'm saying? Like shit that I like. Like I like cool ass shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Like let's shift things a little bit and make people think a little bit more. I think having your vocals not in the front, it, it just it tricks your brain. Like, <laughs> like it literally tricks your mind. And now you're like having a, this whole different like euphoric perspective of this song. And these back these vocals are dominant in the rear of the room, you know. Uh, I did a trick on my very first Atmos mix. I had no idea what I was doing, so I took the vocal, and it's about um, it's a song called "Panic Room" by Camel Fat, uh, this EDM artist. And there's this part where she says, "You know, it's gonna come for you, come for you." So I had on a bed layer the vocal spin around to where when she says come for you, it's over your right shoulder, and then the other come for you is over your left shoulder. So it's kind of give that scary kind of vibe. It was it was awesome. I loved, I loved it. My, my viewers were like, holy crap, this is cool. You know, obviously, like, that wouldn't fly for a lot of people, but, you know, I'm excited to see, like, what creative pe- I heard his. Have you heard his his stuff? Obscene Steelers. Obscene Steelers? Oh. Dude, that shit was awesome. Yeah, me and us have a sync group together called Obscene Stealers, and we make oh, uh, music for film, TV, video games, stuff like that. And oh, we're kind of like the music guys, and we collaborate with other creators. Yeah. And, then that, his know. his albums, I was like, he's like, you know, I'm kind of, you know, doing all this catalog stuff. I'm like, okay, well, what would you make if you could just? And he's like, I got something. I'm like, okay, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yeah, I'm, release I'm it. Too. You know? Topic, man, sick. Topic. Well, listen, topic. I, I wanna I wanna come and hang out with Ken. I couldn't make it this time around, but, you know, I really want to have that time to really kick it with you just because, you know, I want, I want to know, I want to like hang out with your creative brain, like switch to. <laughs> the feeling is very mutual. Whenever you can get your ass out to Ohio and. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's going to be very soon. Days, very I'm soon. Looking forward to it, bro. I'm <laughs> seriously looking forward to it. Mark, did you have uh, something you wanted to bring up? Yeah. Well, um, the. I think the biggest thing that's been surprising for me is um, it just has to do with Apple Music, with it being turned on by default. Like if oh, right, yeah. your song has an Atmos mix, genius. They just play it over the speakers. They're hearing Atmos. <laughs> you know, right? It's the Atmos mix. It's not the stereo. And I don't think that artists are aware of that yet. You know? I don't think most people are aware of that. Yeah, yeah. a lot and of people in the music, consumer space yeah. is that they have no idea. Well, about well I, I need to say something about that. Apple continuously does genius diabolical shit like they're literally next level i think the default with atmos was a marketing move and because you know everyone needs to get used to this no one really likes it because they don't know it (laughs) you know what i'm saying specifically from a binaural perspective that's like hit or miss so i think apple's way of getting the market and getting people involved was hey let's just make a default and not even let them know Listen. They're and unknowingly they getting around. used to it, right? And then when they hear it, they're like, when they hear stereo, they're like, wait a second, something's wrong. It's just, it's like evil genius. <laughs> <laughs> but, but honestly, um, like, if the Atmos mixes are like, if they slap, it's going to sound good. Yeah. You know, it's going to sound really good on the phone. Either. Sound really good. Yeah. 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 I feel like uh, a well done Atmos mix is like, 20% better in headphones and a thousand percent better in speakers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But a definite level up. It's like it's like hearing the HD version of this song that you're just like uh, in the room, you're in the middle of now. You know, the, yeah, yeah. the headphones and stereo just don't really put you in the middle of it the way that the Atmos Binaural does. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. And that's a pretty, and the spatial audio with uh, the Apple head tracking, uh, head head tracking. tracking and things oh. like that. And just the way uh, Apple seems to locate a little bit better. Yeah, I, I got I got something to say about the head tracking. Whatever you do, don't put your phone in your back pocket because all right. of a sudden, <laughs> all of a sudden, I was like underwater. I'm like, what what the heck happened? <laughs> Why is what what happens when you put your phone in your back? Pocket? I I don't know. I put on this song. I hit play. I, I was like, oh, uh, you know, I put my phone in my back pocket, and all of a sudden, it felt like I I don't know, dude. Everything just whoop. Like like went that, backwards yeah, or something or upside down and I was just like what's going on and I'm like oh, oh, is that head tracking on? <laughs> Excuse Back me. When they did the head tracking is from the from like the headphones. I, I like it because like when I'm in the gym and I'm like you know I'm doing push ups like it kind of changes depending on where you are. Like if you levitate, it's, it's great. if you're down low, like I went to tie my shoe and it was like it, it's fucking cool as hell. Or oh, I'm bench pressing. So it, it's an adaptive like experience, like, and that's what's cool because like our attention spans are like this now. So it's like people aren't really, you know, they're not. Everyone's like, all right, done, done. 
So now everything needs to be like a circus or roller coaster ride. You know what I'm saying? And you got to be able to have your choice of the experiences. Head tracking, fixed, nothing. You know what I'm saying? We need options. So that that's all like part of like that's all part of the. Experience. My favorite uh, head tracking is when I'm just out and about in the world and I'm walking through you know wherever and I have head tracking on and it's just the coolest experience. Mm -hmm. I just. You know, I feel like I'm in a space just out at a mall or walking in a park or wherever. It's uh, that's my favorite time to use head tracking. When I'm I even love when the vocals get stuck, like in one place, like it's just <laughs> the right ride. Like I, I actually like that. <laughs> do, do you make it a game? You're like, okay, how do I get it back? How do I get it back? Do I need to like, like <laughs> take fox viewing positions? You know, like like in Married with Children. <laughs> but it's just, it's just cool, man. It's it's just really uh, di it's different. It's a different experience. So that's very cool. Um, so we're getting close. We've been at this over an hour. This is amazing. Um, do we have any other things that we want to touch on before I get back to the meat and potatoes at the end of the show? Because uh, we're almost to two hours, but we're going to run a little bit long tonight. For we're going to run long. All right, I love running long. Yeah, I'd love to ask Let's go. you guys a question. What's actually. up? All okay. right. So there's all of you guys. Aw. Yeah. yeah. Thank yeah. you. Nazi <laughs> as well. <laughs> <laughs> Nazi. Um, so there's a lot of talk about, you know, should Atmos be front loaded? Should it be, you know, even across the room? Should Is the head in the center of the room? Or, you know, basically just different approaches to it. And I'd love to hear everybody's answer to that question. How you approach whether or not you worry about, am I too front loaded? Am I in the center of the room? Is it different every song? How do you guys like to go about it? The, w the way that I tend to approach spreading the energy around, and that's kind of the way I look at it, because I think if you front load too much, you can't get as much volume out of your mm -hmm. overall fold down. Um, so, you know, we tend to use a bit of the Mike Miller method, which is put a lot of the stuff that would normally go in stereo LR into the uh, sides. Uh, not so much that you're overloading it, but, you know, taking some weight off of the center and then moving things that feel interesting in the back, back there and, you know, finding your own space. But a lot of times what I find is when I think I want to put something somewhere, it doesn't translate in the headphones or the speakers the way I want it to. Mm -hmm. And it eventually migrates back to LR. Mm -hmm. So never be afraid to put something back into LR if it's just not sounding right where mm -hmm. you're placing it. Yeah. Um, and I think generally music mixers, I'll be interested in your opinion, Rock, avoid the center channel and are pretty light on LFE. And I think that's a pretty common, I, I think you could probably remove my center channel from the room and I wouldn't Same. miss it. Don't do that. Um, yeah. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's my take on uh, approaching. Yeah. Um, Jonathan, how do you approach uh, at most, like um, spreading your energy around? I think a really... Uh, I think a really cool thing is like definitely seeing what the song needs because like if the song just like is like piano or like uh, guitar vocal, you know, I, there's not usually a bunch of low end elements, but you still have to have like something holding weight down. Um, I think definitely getting an even spread kind of like for me is like a really good experience because my initial goal is actually like um, to have the client one day he's gonna they're gonna sit in a room. Like, they're going to sit in the Atmos room, and they're going to pl press play, and they're going to be like, holy shit, you know, this is my, this is my song. Like, this is yeah. my experience. And uh, I want them to, if, they're, if the room is, like, fucked up, like, oh, the speaker's, like, out of whack or out of, like, I want the mix to still translate. So, like, with ca ha carrying the same weight, carrying the same energy and impact. So um, that's kind of, like, what I've been trying to figure out in good translation. Um, because, well, obviously the headphones, because everybody's going to listen to that. But I think just, like, the end, like, goal, how they're really going to get that, like, feeling. And ob obviously, like, you know, leaving it, like, minus 18 and, like, right. you know, following those kinds of rules and, like, really pushing that kind of boundary of, like, getting that goal. Yeah. I, I actually, I hate the minus 18 rule. I mean, I understand. I get it. I get it. I get it. And I've tested it. And, yeah, they're absolutely right. You cannot really go. I I try to push minus fourteen. I do it, and it's like, <laughs> but um, you know, as far as like approach on mixing, right? For me, it's as long as you have that stereo image, man. Like where you can 
go to that reference, you AB the reference from your stereo image, and that's dead on, the world is yours. You you have a blank canvas to just create. Because it's not so much like the engineering is, like most of the time, it's done already, right? We're we're really just producing and, and arranging and enhancing, you know? And then obviously you come with the mastering skills. But I think like stereo image is good. My transients and everything, everything sounds accurate. We have everything punchy or however way we want it. And then, you know, now we can be musical. I love to be musical in the middle of the room. Music in the middle. I love my drums, anything dominant, right in the LCR. I do use the center channel very strategically. I mean, I like to kind of like create a curve, like kind of like a, a bowl, half a bowl kind of thing with the vocals, specifically when it comes into the chorus. So like my choruses, I would push a little bit more into like in a 916 setup, I'll push more into the wides and then I'll just tap that center channel just to like give it a little bit more presence, kind of like using it kind of like a compressor, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah yep, yep, yep. yep. Yeah. And, then, and then, you know, I would, anything that's like, like a atmospheric, like, you know, strings or, or like anything with emotion, I would like to have behind me, right? And like, kind of like up a little bit. Um, And then, I also like to put low end around the room. So my low end would spread from, it'll be dominant in the LCR. Sometimes I'll put it directly in the middle, like in the sides and in the rear, because my focus is I like to make sure the room is full and well balanced. Um, and that works a lot of times when you don't have a lot of assets, specifically in hip hop, you don't really have too many assets, right? You have drums, sample, synth, things like that, opposing to like a pop pop record or whatever the case is where you got tremendous amount of things to play with to build that velocity in a room. Um, and then reverbs are fun too. I, I love trying like cool shit with reverbs. I even create my own reverbs. There's a there's a plugin called True Midside by RGF Studios. I don't know if you guys know about it, but what it does is if you put that on your vocal channel and just solo the side information, it sounds like reverb that you're pulling from that record. Obviously, you EQ it and mess around with it because we, a lot of the times I don't get the reverb separated, which I wish I did because you can do so much more. So I'll separate it myself and I'll take that reverb, duplicate the channel, and I'll put the reverb like in the rear corners or in the, the rear wides just to build that atmospheric feel. And it makes the vocals sound bigger too. So there's, yo, there's so many tricks, man, and so many things that you can do. And every record like is different. <laughs> like every mix is different, literally. Like, the albums usually when you get an album like the album is like all right you get through like the first three tracks and like everything else is kind of like a piece of cake but like every like atmos project is like that i've never had one that was the same yet <laughs> so some kind of slightly different in their own so it's it's yeah, really yeah. the wild west out here which i think is what interests all of us yeah it's like being on the cutting edge of something new that's probably gonna i mean music is gonna stay immersive from here on out uh, whether it's yeah, Atmos, yeah. it probably is going to stay Atmos. Um, but other formats might come into the fray. Uh, but we're in the immersive age now, and I want to be a part of it. I think we all do. Yep. And so, come what may, we're in it. I got uh, one last thing. I was speaking with Techno Dad before the show, and I was kind of amazed by what you were telling me about the home theater market. Uh, I know with myself, with Pure Mix stuff, I'm, I'm talking to guys like, Ken and yeah. and Andrew and everybody and you know we're we're this closed group of people who are making the content but we think most of our conversations are we're the only ones listening to this on speakers what does it matter <laughs> yeah you know? no like, that's, that's, not, so many that's not true at all yeah that's not so true I want to hear about that um, give me hope <laughs> <laughs> so so going along with like what you guys would do uh, with mixing I've predominantly I know they're gonna listen on speakers so headphones are not even an option. I don't really, I don't care about headphones, right? Um, oh, did we just lose Rock? Oh, we might have oh, oh, there it is. Um, what I care about is creating something cool, right? Hey, I don't care about that negative 18, <laughs> you know, that LU, <laughs> that I do not. The next 10 because you're not, not releasing to streaming. My right. viewers right. are crazy. They got like four 18s up front, then they got one 18 <laughs> behind each chair. Like I these want to be your viewer. Right? Yeah. <laughs> these, yeah. Dude, some of these home theaters, man, are just ridiculous, yeah. right? And they spend all this money, all this time, all this energy, 
And like, they're like, man, you know, they even I would, right? I was telling you guys, I was watching these Atmos movies. It's a two hour, two hour movie. Maybe there's two minutes of good Atmos. And I'm like, man, I just wasted two hours that, watching this, right? I noticed that you on know? Apple TV. I was firing up Apple TV in here because I can stream to speakers. And a lot of it is just dialogue. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. Or uh, in movies, More. it's, it's uh, the, music, the musical score. They'll put the musical score yeah. up there. Right and not a whole lot. So when I'm mixing a track, you know, if you know, I find you know some of my favorite because I, I you know, I'm I'm a house and techno DJ, mm. so I love that stuff. And like some of my favorite songs, I found like stems for. And so I was just like, okay, um, what I like to do is take one or two layers and just be really creative with those two layers. Then I'll use the other stuff, maybe the vocal, maybe the bass, whatever, to kind of lock things in in the front a little bit. Um, and then just go crazy. Arpeggio's going boop, boop, boop. And I shit you not, I will wake up and, and I had a dream about the renderer and all the little tennis balls <laughs> in a certain like in a certain <laughs> pattern. And I'll be like, I could totally do that. And that would sound awesome. Yep. And my viewers would go crazy over and it. And you sleep like shit the rest of the night. Oh, dude, I'm like, I wake up at three. I'm like, I got to try this now. <laughs> I got to try this now. You know, um, uh, like you were saying, um, and Kai, and you rock, you said it too. Like, I want to be inside the music. I want to be in the center of the music, right? And you said it like two channels, like you're an observer. Whereas like in, with Atmos, so I like visualize everything before. So if I listen to a track, I'll be like, oh, that layer, I could do this with. I could do that with this layer. And that's kind of like how I imagine it and i know i know the challenges of speaker system too because i if you notice because was it you or uh, um nolan. nolan that said do you always just hard pan things to speakers because in it when you're in between like um okay if we if we do front left and right and you know we have two ears facing that way we, we can do a phantom center easily right but yeah. if you were to um like uh, if you're we we're, we're talking about wides, right? Mm. You guys have look. You guys like to put stuff in wides. If you have a five ear level speaker configuration and you put something in the wide, chances are that person is going to hear from the surround speaker, huh. right? Because if you think about it, if I turn this way and I hear this and this to make this wide coming out right here, mm -hmm. I'll hear that. But if I'm here, because I have two ears, this. You know, going this way. Right. If I only have now one ear and it's trying to image something, it's going to just default to which speaker is closer right. to that ear. Well, you know, so like there's all these things. So like, you know, it's in it's the, been interesting. In I, the I, consumer market, like, how, is there any kind of stats on how many Atmos systems are sold every year? Oh, dude, you know what? Here, I, there, <laughs> here's give us some hope for you yeah, know yeah. Here's consumer a, adoption. I, Save us, Techno Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Guy. You guys, look, first of all, I don't know how I got here. Right? You guys I don't know how I got here. You guys are like like these like insane guys that do all this crazy stuff. You know, I'm just I'm just a guy having a shit ton of fun with this new format because awesome. I, I just I want to make cool shit, right? And and my viewers, they are they are dying for it. You know, some spend twenty thousand, some spend two hundred thousand on their home theater system. Yeah, no. No give Dude. us some hope for So cheaper. so like, you know, I'm I'm I'm, I'm out cheaper here. Hope. <laughs> cheaper than cheaper hope than not for rich people. I, I, I uh, actually we shot some content. Um and if you want to get into an eleven channel um speaker array, you can do it for a about under 2000 in wow. the consumer market the speakers aren't going to be fantastic the receiver is right. going to have some limitations entry but level. but i mean entry level for right. for a speaker array 11 channel speaker array right. with two subs not it's not it's not bad you know and then and then in like home theater we always talk about the journey like okay well you know in a couple of years maybe i'll upgrade the receiver <laughs> or upgrade you know and, and then you get and then and then it's like a game you know and like every two two three years you're like okay now i'm at this level you know, should I stay here? Should I go um, a little bit bigger? Can I, you know, ditch the TV and go with the projector? You know, is this thing? something that the manufacturers are looking at and going, yeah, we we bet on this and the bet was oh, one hundred percent. Like you can get a Dolby Atmos receiver for like five hundred bucks. Okay, right, seven channels, so two high channels only. Uh, but the jump to four high channels, you're going to nine hundred to eleven hundred at that point. If you want one box to do eleven channels powered. You're talking three grand. What about seven one two? Seven one two. So that's a nine channel. So you're going to be in the eight hundred to eleven hundred. So if you were looking at the Pioneer LX five hundred five, which I had uh, for a while, um, 
that will process a lot. So here's the other thing. It'll auto, process auto 11 channels. Nerdy, but, yeah, it'll know. process 11 channels, but only power nine. Oh, okay. So so Seven, if you yeah. if you wanted those other two channels, uh, a basic $70 or $80 <laughs> Class D desktop amplifier, right? Little tiny thing. You just right. connect it up for the surround back or the rear heights. That's usually right. the, the two that need power. And then you can run 11 channels for, you know, just with that. And then there's the, so, you know. So the consumer budget options are not exactly fantastic yet. They're not, they're not budget. Hopefully they'll yeah. well, get cheaper. There's also, I mean, that's like audiophile-ish. Right. right? But they, they also, also, and I know you know this about this too, Techno Dad, like, there's also like, just not the audiophile people, but people who just generally love good sound, right? And like, those people are buying like Sono systems, which are amazing. I mean, we we quality control at UMG on a Sonos system. You know what I mean? Like, and that's like with the Sonos, the Arc, the soundbar, the era, the era three hundreds, the the new ones. They'll stand alone. I actually worked with Giles Martin on some like engineering for the uh, era three hundred. And when he came to New York, he flew to New York, and he like flew. You know, he had a bunch of engineers at Republic, and we were just playing our mixes on that one speaker. And he was like taking all of our notes and like we were he had his whole dev team there they had like fucking seven computers and like we were just making adjustments a lot it was the sickest like sickest stuff and i'm like again because i know atmos i'm like i'm i'm going into like r&d with like products you know what i'm saying um and that that one box alone is pretty sick like it's up firing forward firing inside you know what i'm saying and you're you're getting that that emulation and that information so and bro I'm pretty sure in the next year there's going to be a tremendous amount of product coming out that's just high end, you know. I was at a CES this year, and uh, there were two demos for Dolby Atmos Flex Connect, right? Uh -huh. iSense did one, and TCL did one. So, so they used the TV speakers and two other speakers. Uh, HiSense had them behind, right? And they played the Amaze demo, or no, the Leaf demo, and I heard the Leaf go behind me, right? Cool. And then, oh, and it does like a 30-second calibration, right? Mm -hmm. The TV and both speakers. Okay. The TCL one was even trippier because the TV was up front. They had one speaker up by the TV and one behind me to the left. They played the Leaf demo, and the Leaf went all the way around me from the back. And I was just like, okay, because I know there's no speaker there at all, yeah. right? Nowhere near it. It's up there, and the other one's up here. Okay. So that was cool, but <laughs> the TVs you have to buy for this? <laughs> Like ten grand. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's all coming. So, it's all niche so right it's, now. Yeah. And no, we wanted to hear, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I look, look. The more, the more Apple is pushing this, the more Dolby pushes this. You know, it's going to trickle down at some point. I mean, think about. Um, I know it's 2017 for you guys, but the home theater market, it's 2014. So it's already been around for 10 years, mm -hmm. right? Well, it's 2021 for us. 20, oh, as far as streaming. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Was it, is it 2021? Yeah. So this is just yeah. three years of just yeah. streaming music? Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Shit is brand new, man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, yeah. This so, is literally the Wild West for us. You've been yeah. in it for 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully. Yeah, got any mix tips? Got yeah. me? <laughs> oh, man, you don't want my mix tips. Dude, my mix tips are making sound as trippy as fuck and don't care about it. You know what? You know what? Rock. You know what I would love, love to... to Take one of the tracks that you're mixing and just yeah, fuck, yeah. just do one for you, bro. Just do one for you and yeah. see how awesome you can make it. You know, because I know I know you, man. We hung out for quite some time. And I think you could you I think you make some hot shit, bro. Some hot I shit. You know what I'm saying? Shane in Shane Grush in the Pure Mix chat um, asked if we could all discuss the use of the center channel. I think we kind of covered it. Um, really I mean, people don't like to use it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, well, we basically yeah. avoid the center channel mostly as yeah. mixers. Rock says he, he sneaks a little bit of uh, lead vocal into the center channel sometimes as an anchor, which makes sense if you've ever walked around an Atmos room and nothing is in the center channel. Uh, your mm -hmm. lead vocal shifts around the room and it doesn't stay in the center. And if mm -hmm. your lead vocal is in the center channel, uh, then it can stay more anchored towards the, your center yep. focus of listening. Uh, which yep. really helps, but a lot of people's center channels just sound like shit. So uh, mm -hmm. yeah. that's kind of for the time being why I tend to avoid it because yeah. most people just don't have them calibrated. So if you guys sneak it in there, are you still relying on Phantom Center for the most of the image, and then oh yeah, yeah. getting a little piece in there for the yeah yeah yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah you just gotta watch out for that comb filter. 
And it's I'll a, do that with <laughs> uh, I'll do that with instruments as well. If I have something that is feeling a little bit too wide or a little bit too something, but I like what it's doing out there, then I'll sneak a little bit of that same signal into the center channel. And sometimes yeah, I'll yeah. even darken that signal in the center channel a little bit so I get the weight of that in front of me yeah, yeah. and the width of it beside me. And that really helps kind of uh, solidify it in your ear so it's not phasey and kind of makes mm -hmm. you want to turn your head. Yeah. Ken, what, Ken what, are you doing, doing, what are you doing with, like, your guitars? Like, you have a shit ton of guitar stems. Like, how are you using those? Uh with the, the catalog one that I'm mixing right now has a ton of guitar layers. And I'm finding uh, that uh, a lot of my main energy goes to the sides. Uh, yeah, and yeah. most of the important like solo type information or anchor type information, I usually still put in LR um, or somewhere okay. close to LR or LR height. So it folds down mm -hmm. to LR. Uh, and then I'll put you know the secondary freely stuff in the back or in the height. <laughs> oh, yeah, so you, you know, do you do move the guitars around the room. Yeah, I try and paint a picture with everything that I have and I just try and make sure that wherever I put something it's it uh, doesn't take you away from the way the stereo made you feel, but just expands it. Um gotcha. so yeah, I'll tend to anchor the important things either inside or front LR, the frilly stuff in the back or the heights. Um gotcha. and uh yeah. Yeah, I, I get I guitars are tricky. I, I, I <laughs> like I get I get freaked out by them sometimes. Like when there's a lot, <laughs> so I'm like, uh, I think I'm gonna keep them all in one place. <laughs> yeah, the the catalog album I'm mixing right now is the guitars on it are so wide, and it's super yeah. impressive. And what I'm noticing is uh, the original mixer panned a bunch of the layers hard left and a bunch of the layers hard right. Yes. And, yeah. yeah. And enough, none of the guitar is in the center. And he left all of the rest of the music for the center. And it just creates this huge image in stereo. And, uh, yeah, the things that you, like you were saying earlier, the things that you learn as a as an Atmos mixer dissecting other people's stereos is a really great way to learn stereo mixing. Yeah. 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 It's like it's reverse like engineering, reverse. man. It's the best. Like, it's amazing. It, again, like, I, I'm not, like, a huge in a stereo mixing space, right? But, like... Doing Atmos, it, it literally is like bringing me down like step by step from like every single perspective. And I'm like, you can't learn this shit any any better way than like this. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, about the center channel thing, um, we use it because our audience is home theater. Yeah. Right? So every who is it? Was it you saying that the No, no, somebody else. Uh, anything on that TV screen? You watch John Wick? Yeah. Everything's yeah. It was you, right? Yeah. yeah. We were chatting about Every that. everything's coming out of the center. The gunshots. Right. Anything that's happening on screen is coming out. And so, like, I, my recommendation, and like everybody else in the home theater space, you spend the most amount of money on your front stage. Mm -hmm. So when they have these arrays, yeah, right. Um, their center channel. Is, like you, you should have seen my center channel. God, if it was on its uh, standing up, it's like this tall. You know, four six and a six and a half inch drivers. Like a big ass horn, right? And yeah, huge yeah. and heavy. Um, so um, we found a way to use it in music, where we have a nice spread across, um, a little bit into the wides, left and right, center, and and it sounds awesome. I like played you yesterday. Yeah. I played it for you yesterday. Yeah. And so you know, if if other people are not using the center channel for vocals, fuck okay. it. We'll do it, and we'll make it sound awesome, and that's why, you know, these EDM guys are going to come to me. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> it's all the Wild West. Yeah. There, there aren't many rules in this game, right? You know, because uh, somebody said here, I would use the center, Big Jack 79. So I, would, I, I would say use the center to anchor. Some people have amazing centers. I would say the center should be the best speaker since it's primarily for movies. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. you know, there's... Well, you just, you just give me an idea, idea. because um, now, like, do some albums and stuff like that. I'm I'm thinking about Atmos, and I, I'm kind of like getting into like this like cinematic kind of like weird thing. So I'm looking at I'm like using a lot more like effects, like gunshots, not gunshots, but like car sounds and like special effects in the music. But I never thought to utilize the center channel for that, and that kind of would make sense of you you 
using the center channel in in combination with the LFE to hyping all of that stuff up. So you, you kind of gave me a, a good idea on what I should try when I have like stems or anything that has any type of special effects. Santa Monica, man, call me. I'll come over. We hang out and, you know, yeah, we make some fire, bro. You know that. You know, it's a, it's already going to be a party when you and I hang out anyway. So. Oh, yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. yeah. <laughs> it, it's just like, it's inevitable. I hope the world is ready. <laughs> not, they're not. They're not. <laughs> so, uh, great. Rock Am, thank you so much for joining us, dude. Yeah. Such a oh, pleasure. Thank you, oh, man. Thank you Such a pleasure. You are the man. I'm not worthy. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I hey, man, I might send you some stuff to, for mastering. Dude, I'll man. hit you up after. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Definitely, <laughs> man. All right, guys. I'll see you. Thank you so much. Later, man. Take care. All right, later. Later.